Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a cooking video. We're going to do Picky People's Meatloaf. <laughs> First thing, we're going to use a lot of really good ingredients. This recipe, I'm going to show you two different ways to cook it. And we're going to use two pounds of ground beef. This is a 93.7 lean. We're going to use minced onion, dried parsley flakes, ground mustard, white pepper, Worcestershire sauce. We're going to use some olive oil for the cups. These are plain breadcrumbs, two eggs, one egg per pound, some cr crushed garlic, some granulated garlic, and some salt. Now this is like, meatloaf is one of the easiest things and one of the things that my pop taught us how to make when we were very young, first thing. So we're going to use a cookie sheet to make one kind of meatloaf. We're going to use a muffin tin to use another, a bowl for mixing, and of course aluminum foil. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees and make sure your rack is in the middle of the oven. Thank you, assistant. <laughs> this part is the easiest, okay? Wash your hands, take off your jewelry. I do all this before I get started. It's just much easier to prep this way. So we're just gonna open the ground beef, dump it right in the bowl. Now, as far as measurements are concerned, that is really, up to you. <laughs> I know that the whole point of me teaching you cooking recipes is so that you can make something that you've never made before the way that I make it. But when it comes to meatloaf, there are so many different variations and so many different techniques and tips and tricks and ingredients and styles. I feel like they all pretty much have a very similar basis. So we use white pepper on occasion because it's not as strong as black pepper um, and normally you would just put salt and black pepper in things but mom has a little sensitivity to black pepper so just a bare pinch or two of the black of the white pepper and then a bunch of minced onion this is almost a half of this jar which means it's about two tablespoons to four tablespoons of minced onion about a tablespoon-ish of dried parsley flakes. You could use fresh if you have them. This is some ground mustard. It's not a hot mustard, it's just ground mustard. Um, we're gonna put in about anywhere from two teaspoons to a tablespoon. Again, just a fair bit. You see? I like to get the clumps out so it's not nobody's left with a big bite of mustard. <laughs> And now granulated garlic. I've switched back to some granulated garlic for recipes like this, but whenever I coat meat or stuff, I still use the garlic powder because it's mom's a less, less sensitive to it that way. Or she's more sensitive, more sensitive to it when it's on recipes. Um, now we're gonna add in a heaping cereal spoon, teaspoon of the chopped garlic. It's probably closer to a tablespoon. Um, which is equivalent to three cloves. So if you have fresh garlic, three cloves. And then about uh, two teaspoons of salt. This is two pounds of ground beef. So you're going to use one egg per pound of ground beef and one teaspoon of salt per pound. It might not seem like a lot, but we are going to add Worcestershire sauce to it. And I want to show you on the Worcestershire sauce. It can settle in the bottom. So you want to make sure you shake it, look at the bottom, and make sure that there's nothing sitting under the glass. And for the Worcestershire, again, that's a matter of taste. We like to add a bunch. Now this meat is 93% lean, which means it doesn't have a lot of flavor from fat. So we're adding a lot of flavor with ingredients. Now we're adding plain breadcrumbs as a binder, but obviously if you have a, a gluten sensitivity, my one of my favorite tricks that we did when we were younger is we ground up cornflakes. So if you get some gluten-free cornflakes, you could use gluten-free breadcrumbs, you can use gluten-free bread and just chop it up, put it in the food processor, or you can use gluten-free oatmeal, another way we used to bind our meatloaf when we were younger. Um, you know, we didn't have a ton of money, so we used to basically do whatever we could and use whatever we had. Now, some variations to this meatloaf, if you wanted to put an Italian twist on it and you don't have picky eaters at your house, I love to add Parmesan cheese and Italian seasoning. Definitely the way to go. It's almost like making a giant meatloaf. I mean, it's a giant meatball, and then you could serve it with marinara if you want to. When we were younger, my mother used to want to always experiment with the meatloaf. So there was one phase where she had, um, we were putting a channel down the middle and putting mozzarella cheese down the middle and then basically encasing mozzarella cheese in it. Wasn't my father's favorite because, you know, 
money, cheese. Um, he just likes a plain meatloaf, and we always served it with ketchup, or now Jim and I eat it with barbecue sauce. Okay? So if you can, um, are doing a keto meal, then you want, you can also use plain pork rinds ground up as your binder. Um, and then of course you can always add cheese as a binder as well. Um, but this is just plain meatloaf. Now the two secrets to meatloaf, one is mix it well, and one is to not over mix it. So if you over mix hamburger meat, it can tend to be tough, but you want to mix it enough that ingredients are spread all over and that you have it where it's going to stay together because you don't want it to be like a loose meat sandwich when you pull it out of the oven. <laughs> now for this particular recipe, as you saw, I sprayed the six muffin pan, uh, the six cup muffin pan with olive oil cooking spray. Um, I do that so it just gives it a quick release um, when you make the muffin cups of meatloaf. Now, there are times where we just make the muffin cups and we or we just make a meatloaf. But this one I wanted to show you both and how they come out. What it's nice about the muffin cups is not only are they better for leftovers and they're individually portioned, but if you're the meatloaf person who likes the crusties, the end, does your family fight for the end of the meatloaf? No, just mine? Okay. Um, if you're the kind of family that loves the ends of the meatloaf, then if you make them in muffin cups, basically everybody gets an end. So... Um, now the portioning that we're going to use for these muffin cups, this is a, I feel like it's a half cup disher, or it might be a six ounce disher, um, like a, I use it for my cookies, uh, it could be a one cup disher. I'm, I, I always thought it was a, a one cup disher. I'll have to measure it someday. It can't be one cup. It's not that big. I think it's a half a cup. <laughs> I'm just confused because the other day I was in the, the store in Amish country and I saw a four ounce one and it looked way smaller than this, but four ounces would be a half a cup. So I was very confused. <laughs> so I have a warm, wet rag here. When you mix meatloaf that's cold, you tend to get like a frozen hand. Um, but my hands were clean. I just used that so I wouldn't uh, get the grease off while I was using the scoop. So what we're going to do for portioning out into the muffin cups is we're going to make sure that they're all even by using the scoop and scraping the scoop off. Make sure you jam all the meat down in the scoop and then you clean the scoop off. And this way each one is the exact same size. Okay, and it actually fills in really nicely. Um, you know, you don't have to add more. Now, I'll show you at the end. They do, even this 93% lean meat does have shrinkage. So you can overfill these cups if you're just like for man sized portions. Um, that's okay. I just wanted to share with you that you can cook it in the in the pit in the pan to get crusty edges. Okay. The other thing that's nice about making them in the muffin tins is that mom likes hers more well done than Jim and I. So um, we're going to bake this for a total of 30 minutes and the muffin cups will get more of that well done feel and then the regular meatloaf will just be just about done. Um, but we add the Worcestershire sauce and we add the egg and the breadcrumbs and the spices and stuff and it really doesn't dry out. Um, we won't make our meatloaf in a loaf pan, my family has never made meatloaf in a loaf pan. In fact, not until I started working at the group home did I ever see anybody make meatloaf in a loaf pan. But that makes perfect sense, right? Because it's supposed to be a meatloaf. I don't know. But we've always just shaped it on the cookie sheet. Um, now, when we were little, again, this was one of the first things we were um, invited to do in the kitchen. Uh, get all the ingredients, mix the meatloaf, and then shape it. Now, I was a budding artist when I was a child, and I loved to make the meatloaf into faces and shapes. I would make uh, bunny ears, but then the ears would cook faster and get burnt. I would make a face, but then the nose would all shrink in the meatloaf. When we were younger, we only had like 75% lean, you know, chopped meat, so it didn't look like a face when it came out of the oven. But as you can see, I'm just making it into a long, flat, rectangular-ish type hamburger <laughs> that's the shape that we usually do you could mound it um you could make it round like oval shaped but then the ends will get real real crusty okay 
Now, wash up, get in the oven. And then we're going to put it in the oven for, um, like I said, initially 20 minutes. Now, if you're making just one big meatloaf or if you're making just muffin cups, times will vary. But at 350 degrees is kind of the temperature that we baked almost everything when we were growing up. Um, I think that's the whole world around, it seems. <laughs> Every once in a while, you'll get a 425 thing when you're baking or reheating something. But for the most part, I feel like 350 degrees is where all the recipes were. So I'm going to bake these simultaneously at the same time. I'm going to um, make sure they're pushed away from the door and then set the timer for 20 minutes. And then we'll come back in 20 minutes and check it out. So after 20 minutes was up, Jim came back. He looked... Um, accidentally turned off the oven <laughs> he looked and um they looked a little gray he said not quite brown enough so he wanted to put them back on for 10 more minutes I trusted him um I I probably would have stopped here but I will tell you the truth it's really going to be dependent on how you like your meatloaf I know that that sounds silly um it does have good color on it it's not crispy necessar necessarily but it, w it is done at this point. If you like your meatloaf extra um, like this, like very juicy kind of medium rare in the middle, but you still want that crisp on the top, all you have to do is put them back in the oven, hit the broiler for a total of two minutes. Um, well, really depending on how high your broiler is. But you, put, you broil the tops for just two minutes and it will brown up the top and add more color but still keep medium rare in the middle of the meatloaf, okay? Now, don't worry about the fact that there's egg in there. Medium well, medium rare uh, will actually cook that egg because medium rare is about 160 degrees inside, internal temperature. So, um, And that's it. Now, when I'm done, I just put it on my, my dad's <laughs> football plate. Um, this was a plate that he had from when they owned a restaurant, and him's parents owned a restaurant. We've always just called it the football, and that's what we put it on. Traditionally, that's where the meatloaf goes. Um, and then for the cups, I just happen to have a dirty meatloaf pan that I'm turning them out on. But you can take your, like a butter knife and go around and get the crispy edges if you have any stickage. I would normally do that first. Um, but I wasn't worried about it because we were getting ready to eat. So everybody was hungry. The thing about meatloaf is it smells so good when it's cooking that the dogs are at the door. I'm just saying, you know, the expression, the lions are at the gate, the dogs are at the door. I'm just making these expressions up. Nobody's ever heard them before. Okay, never mind. Um, the hounds are at the door. I don't remember how that goes. But anyhow, <laughs> so that's it. So you're just going to slice it up and enjoy the size that you want. We have garlic mashed potatoes and, st and steamer bagged corn with a ton of Kerrygold butter in it. So, oh, and then, of course, sugar-free raised barbecue sauce. So hopefully you enjoyed this recipe. If you try it, just let us know. And um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Don't forget to share with friends and family. Anybody you know who's interested in making some finicky people meatloaf. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe. And when you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. And as always, you guys take care. God bless. And we'll see you next time. Bye.